What's going on? We are heading into town today because I need to get a PTO overrun clutch coupler, whatever you want to call it, for my Ford 8N. Uh, we're going to my favorite store of all time, ba -ba -da -ba, Royal King, and uh, I already checked online before I left the house. They got them in stock. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go grab one. Uh, when we get back to the garage, I will show you what it is, what they do, and why it's important to have it. Um, I looked I looked online for this particular part. Tractor Supply and Royal King here in Cambridge, Ohio are like right across the interstate from one another, literally like a minute or two. Um, tractor Supply for the same size, 40 bucks more than Royal King. Let that one sink in. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to Royal King for it. I like Royal King better. And uh, we're gonna get home and get this put on. My favorite store in the whole world. Found them finally. One and three eighths by one and three eighths. That's what we need. Correct. Yep. Alrighty. Got it. Okay. Just got out of there. I was in there for about 30, 45 minutes. <laughs> no matter when I come to this store, I always run into like a couple people that I know, and I ran into two people in there, so I had to BS with them for a little bit. But uh went ahead and got it. Uh gonna stop over at sheets and get fuel and maybe hit the car wash because there is a lot of pollen on this truck i don't know it's kind of yellow i don't know how well you can see it but it's due for a wash does anyone else besides me purposely not get a receipt when they fill up their vehicle 346 a gallon I'm guessing it's going to be $75. What I tell you. Literally, as soon as I pulled out of the car wash, it started raining. And then as soon as I got home to my garage, it started misting. <laughs> Ain't that just my luck? Well, this is what I got. It's a PTO overrun clutch coupler, whatever you want to call it. Um, Tractor Supply had this exact same thing for like 90-some dollars. And this was... Uh, $57.99. <laughs> okay, so what this does is, uh, at least for my tractor, it's a 1 and 3 8 spline to a 1 and 3 8 spline. So this will slide right over the PTO shaft on mine. And uh, it's got a roller pin that you put in it. You, you put it through right there, and it goes through your PTO shaft. It almost works as like a keeper. And uh, then it comes with two grease zerks on either side. What this is designed to do is um, a major drawback to the Ford 8N was it, uh, it lacked a live PTO. Now what it means by that is when you press in the clutch uh, on a normal tractor nowadays, it will completely stop you or it'll disengage the transmission. Whereas on a Ford 8N, um, with no live PTO, uh, the shaft is run by the transmission itself, by a lever. 
So what happens is, say you're running a brush hog with its own gearbox on it, and you've got them blades turning at a, you know, about 600 RPMs or whatnot, what that PTO is running. You press in that clutch, and you don't have one of these that'll click and sprint because this inside will spin will spin freely. That right there, and uh, this whole thing will spin, but your PTO shaft on your tractor will not. Um, if you don't have that and you go to stop with a brush hog, the stored energy in that gearbox will, uh, like push you until those blades stop. And if you're like me and you got a pond that you're going to be mowing around or ponds and on a hillside and fences and all that stuff, this is pretty much a, uh, a must have. So I'm going to go ahead and get over to the tractor and show you how to put this on. Okay, so you got the shaft here. Uh, I went ahead and I disengaged the transmission to get this hole on top. This is the hole that we're going to put that roller pin down through. And you have to line them up with this. I have the grease insert on this side, but this side's open. This is the side I'm going to put the roller pin through. You just slide on there. And I figured I'd need a light, which I think I do. right there okay then you're gonna need uh, first you're gonna need a socket or a wrench that goes with your grease insert whatever uh, size it is um, I went ahead I got a punch here that'll fit down in there and help punch that uh, rolling pin the rest of the way down in got a hammer and uh, one thing I did on this was I went ahead, um, I put it in my vise, and I crimped it just ever so slightly. That way, it would just make it easier just going in. Because once it in, once it's in, it, it's it's really not going anywhere. So just you just put it through the top, lined up with that hole, put it through, and nice and easy, it should just go right through. And take a punch. Get the rest of the in there. And I think that is probably as far going to go where it needs to go. So you take your grease fitting. Now don't be surprised folks if you have to, well that's actually screwing in, if uh, as long as you have a tap and die set you won't have to worry about this. Um, you may booger the threads in there a little bit. It, the, the rolling pin may scrape it, uh, the punch may, may hit it, whatever. Um, if you have a, 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 a tap and die set. Uh, you could probably just re-thread that for whatever thread this is, but mine's going right in, so I may not have to do it. At least I hope not. No, it's going down. Oh, kick butt, man. Yeah, I don't have to. Well, maybe. It continues to go in. All right, nice. All right, I just just snug them up. Don't don't overthread them. Uh, yeah, that's about it. 
Now you just uh, you just throw you just make sure you grease that before every time you use it. And your the shaft that comes out of the rear of this is now this. So you just uh, it have, if it has a lock on it, you just slide it on there, and it's as easy as that, guys. But hopefully I can hopefully I gave you some tips and uh, showed you how to properly do this. Uh, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next project.